What is up everybody? Today's Swift tutorial is actually part two of a map kit mini series I'm doing. Part one was displaying the user's location uh, on a map. Part two, uh, which is what this video is, is going to be uh, finding an address via reverse geolocation. Now when you reverse geolocate something, what you're doing, as you're going to see here on the screen, is you're basically moving the map around and the center of the screen is going to be uh, a latitude and longitude. And then you display an address based on that latitude and longitude. So as you can see, I'm moving the map around and I'm getting a different address on the map based on where the pointer is. So you would slide this around till you found your destination, you would get the address, and then part three of this series is going to be actually getting directions from the user's current location to that address, but that'll be in the next video. Let's dive in and talk about reverse geolocating. So the starter project in this video is the finished project from part one. So I'll link the source code to this starter project here in the description. Uh, but if you wanna build that from scratch, go back and watch part one if you haven't seen it already uh, and you can build that and then come back to this video. Or if you just wanna start with this section, again, the starter project link will be in the description. All right, let's give just like a quick 20 second recap here. So we just have a map view uh, on our story. Hey, this is editing, Sean. My apologies, I just realized when I was editing that I forgot to increase my font size. So the font is a little smaller. Super sorry, uh, I've had to record this video twice already due to technical audio difficulties. So, and I already, I still gotta do Swift News later today. So I don't wanna re-record it again. Apologies, the font is small. Uh, yeah, I'll fix it next time. We have the map screen where basically all we're doing here is getting a bunch of permissions. Uh, you know, that pop-up that says, you know, this app would like to use your location. We're handling all that and then we're uh, showing the user location uh, on the map and then updating the view as the user uh, moves here. So all this starter project does is pulls up a map view, shows a little blue dot for the user location, and that's pretty much it. All right, now you're all caught up. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set up the user interface. Now you'll see a picture here on the screen of what the UI is going to look like, but essentially all we're adding is a, is a little pin in the middle to show where the center of the screen is, and then a label at the bottom that is going to update as we're moving the screen around uh, to show the current address. So let's go ahead and add the pin, which is nothing but an image. So just do Command Shift L to pull up your library, uh, UI image view, go ahead and drag that to the center. Now we are just gonna put this dead center uh, constraints. I know my constraints are hidden, I apologize. But basically we're just doing uh, 40 width, 40 height, and then we're just going to uh, horizontally and vertically center in container. So there you go, you see my image. Now I already have my pin in our, uh, in our assets folder here, you can see that pin. So back to the storyboard, click on the image view. We wanna set the image to, I named it pin, you know, yay. Now you can see it's all messed up, it's, it's scaled. So that's cause it's on scale to fill. We wanna set this to aspect fit. So we get the right aspect ratio uh, in the view. So let's go ahead and run this real quick cause I wanna point something out to you. So here we are, as you can see, we have our pin in the middle, but it's not in the dead center, right? The bottom of the pin is at the bottom of the image view. So in order to get the bottom of the pin to be the dead center of the screen, we just need to move the image view up half the size of the image view, which we set to 40. So let's go back and do that real quick. Uh, so again, uh, if you go to edit constraints here, this, this ruler, uh, in our align center Y, again, our height is 40. So we just wanna do negative 20 to bump that up 20 points. And now the bottom of our pin will be in the center of the screen and we are good to go there. So the pin is set up, the pin is good to go. Let's go ahead and add our label. But first, if you remember from part one, I pinned the map view to the bottom of the, um, not the safe area, just the view, because I liked how the map, you know, bled all the way to the edges of the iPhone X. Yep, the X. Uh, we are gonna change that because I wanna label at the bottom. So let's go ahead and get rid of our uh, bottom space to super view uh, constraint here. You just click on this constraint in the right, hit delete. And then I'm gonna move the bottom up a little bit. And then now I'm gonna pin actually to the safe area. So if I go here, again, I'm sorry, you can't see it, but I'm pinning to the safe area uh, with a constraint of zero. So now you can see how this little white space, that is a safe area. That is what I was avoiding by pinning it to the view. But now that I'm gonna have a white label at the bottom, I don't want to see like a label stripe and then the rest of the map at the bottom. That just doesn't look clean to me. So my label's going to be white. So I have the background of the view is white. So you're gonna see here when I put the label down, let's go ahead and do a label. Put the label on top. We're gonna go ahead and uh, set my constraints. And again, I'll just call it out because I am uh, you know, blocking it with my face. So the height is 50. I am pinning it to the view to the left side of zero, pinning it to the right side of zero, and then pinning it to the safe area, again, with a constraint of zero. Add my four constraints, and you see it's, uh, there it is at the bottom. Let's go ahead and format this a little bit. Go ahead and make the background white, like I mentioned. 
and let's go ahead and give it a, a font. You can give it whatever font you want. Uh, I don't know, I always go with good old Avenir Next. And then, you know, Demi Bold, and then we'll make it, you know, 20, done, and then center it. So now if I go ahead and run this, we should see the uh, smooth label at the bottom and it's all gonna be one color. Yep, so there we go, got the pin in the middle, label at the bottom, uh, and again, the map doesn't bleed down to the edge. It's a nice clean bottom section. So that's how we handle that. All right, now let's just hook up the outlet to that label real quick. So pull the map screen in the assistant editor, uh, control drag from the label here, uh, address label outlet, there we go. Let's get rid of the uh, assistant editor there, pull up some code and let's start diving into the actual reverse geolocation now that we have our UI set up. So the first thing I wanna do is just making a little addendum to the other project. Here in this did update location, we don't want to mess with this quite yet because we're gonna be moving the map around to find an address. So we don't want the map to constantly, constantly be moving. Uh, we'll come back to this in part three, but for now, we're just going to actually get rid of this entire function um, for now. Again, we'll be back in a little bit. So in order to use the reverse geolocation, we need to uh, set up the uh, MK map view delegate. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, I like to put all my uh, delegate methods in the extensions. So map screen, and then we're going to do MK map view delegate. There we go. So the delegate method we're looking for here is region did change. So let's go ahead and type that region did change animated. Cool. Now, basically how we're going to make this whole thing work is we have the very, very center of our map. That's why we have the pin dropped onto the center. And we're just gonna keep track of the center of our map screen. And every anytime that changes, we're going to use that coordinate to reverse geolocate an address. And then we're gonna get that address and put it onto our label. So that at a high level is what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and start implementing that. So the first thing we need to do to set all this up, like I said, is to get the center of our map. Now we're gonna use this more than once, so I'm going to write a helper uh, method for it. So now as always, I'm gonna type some code and I'll come back and explain it. All right, so here on line 72, I just named it uh, get center location and then for map view, and then we're gonna pass in the MK map view, which again is our, uh, this thing up here, map view our overall map. Uh, so we are going to create a latitude based on the map views center coordinate. Again, everything's based on the center of this map. Uh, we're gonna grab the latitude and then grab the longitude from that. And then we're gonna create a, a CL location from that latitude and longitude. So down in our region did change, we wanna say uh, let center equal get center location for, and then we're just gonna pass in the map view that we get uh, from the delegate method here. So now whenever the region did change, we're always going to have the center of that map uh, in this variable called center. And then next up, we need to initialize our geocoder, which does all the magic to get the address from the uh, latitude and longitude that we pass in. So uh, let geocoder uh, equal CL geo coder, and then we're just going to initialize that. So now let's go ahead and use this uh, geocoder to get our address based on the center of the map. I'm going to type out some code uh, and I'm going to come back and talk about it. So All right, so let's talk about lines 95 through 106, as this is mostly just error checking stuff. This isn't like the meat of the topic yet, but you need to make sure you check for all these errors and handle all this stuff. So again, we have our geocoder object that we defined here on line 93, and then there's a function on it called reverse geo uh, code location, and then you pass in a location, which is the center, which we created up here. Again, it's just the center of our map. We wanna get the address based on the center of the map. Uh, and we have this uh, weak self here because we're not doing it yet, but anytime you are using a variable uh, defined outside the scope of the closure, so you know this would be the scope of the closure, uh, and I, I'm not doing it yet, but again, we will. Uh, we wanna make sure we uh, set up our closure as weak self as to avoid retain cycles. Uh, and then when doing that self, which again, I'm gonna have to use like, you know, self, dot uh, address label type things. Uh, so when doing this self is now an optional. Uh, so here on line 96, we are making sure we're basically unwrapping that optional using guard to make sure we have an object of self. If we don't, we are just returning um, and we're done. And then here on lines uh, 98 through 101, uh, we can get back an error from the closure. So we wanna make sure uh, we check for the error. If we do get the error, we're gonna show them an alert. Again, not gonna handle that in this tutorial. Uh, and then the last thing we wanna do is to make sure we have a place mark. So this is an array of CL place marks. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then we wanna make sure we have place marks dot first, which is an optional. Uh, if we don't have that, again, show the user. If we do, return. So this is again, just all the kind of tedious error checking that you have to do. Uh, now that we have this out of the way, we're ready to move on to, uh, to the good stuff.
Now let's dive into geocoding a, a little bit. So if we option click into reverse geocode location, open up the documentation, uh, here's the thing I definitely want to talk about here. So it says, after initiating a reverse geocoding request, actually, let me move this over just in case my face is covering it. Uh, do not attempt to initiate another reverse or forward uh, geocoding request. Geocoding requests are rate limited for each app, so making too many requests in a short period of time may cause some requests to fail. Uh, and when the maximum rate is exceeded, you get an error back. So basically what that is saying is you can't just sit there and call reverse geocoding like all the time. So if the user is just moving a tiny little bit, we don't want to do that. We want to save our, our request to reverse geocode for when it's a significant movement in the map. Like imagine if the user is like really, really zoomed in on the map and they're just looking at like their house. Um, you know, you don't want to update the address if they move the map just a, a tiny, teeny bit. Because remember, we're updating every time the region changes uh, on the screen. So in order to handle that, we're going to keep track of our previous location. And then when we get a new location, we're going to do a check on that to make sure it's above a certain distance. And if it is above a certain distance, then we're going to go ahead and request the geocode. So we're kind of creating a little buffer to make sure it's a significant enough movement to uh, you know, warrant the request. So let's go ahead and create our variable here to track our previous location. So var previous location, and that is going to be a CL location. Go ahead and make that optional for now. Again, we'll come back to setting that up. And now we're going to use previous location as a check here, but uh, you know it's going to be nil at first. So initially, when we when we first set up our map, we want to set our initial you know previous location. So here, in uh, if you remember back from uh, the first part, this check for location authorization. When we get authorized when in use, like when we get the OK, this is when we set up all of our map stuff. So here uh, at the bottom here, we're, we're going to go ahead and do uh, previous location equals uh, get location center location for map view. And if you remember, this is the helper function that we just wrote uh, right here. Remember, I said we were going to use it again. Um, now, one quick aside, uh, this is getting pretty cluttered. Um, so let me go ahead and create another helper function uh, func start tracking user location. And I'm going to tell you why I'm doing this here in a second. So go ahead and get rid of that. Get rid of that. And then go ahead and call start tracking user location. Don't know why I have my break in here. Don't need that. Um, so uh, the reason I, this is just a readability thing I like to do. So when I get one of these longer switch statements, I don't want each case to have 20, 30 lines of code. I know that was only five, but I've seen it before where people just write all their implementation in this case. I like my switch statements because there are so many cases to just read very, very quickly. So the reader of the code can just be like, hey, what happens when we're authorized? Okay, we're gonna start tracking the user location. When we're denied, we're showing an alert. When we're not determined, we're requesting permission. Like it's real quick. And then if they wanna dive into, okay, so hey, what, what, what are we doing when we start tracking user location? Now it's compartmentalized into a nice little function down here where they can see exactly what's going on. But the basic switch statement is much more readable when it's very, very minimal code uh, there. So again, just a readability aside. All right, so now that we have our previous location set up from the start, and we need to do this up here. So, uh, cause we don't, we want this to happen uh, before we call our reverse geo uh, code location. So uh, remember I, I talked in part one about guard statements are kind of like a line in the sand. So we want to uh, guard, uh, center dot distance from, and then it is self dot previous uh, location, which I don't need the self because we are not in the closure. And we want to make sure this is greater than 50 and this is in meters. Uh, so if not, we're just going to return, not red run, <laughs> return and uh, be done. And we're not even gonna call the reverse geolocation if the movement's not enough. And we're not gonna necessarily notify the user. You notice on a lot of my errors, I'm like, hey, show an alert to let the user know. But if they just nudge the map a little bit, I'm not gonna pop something up to say, hey, you didn't move it enough. Um, so that's basically all this is guarding against to make sure we're not hitting our rate limit. And then again, if we get past this line in the sand, we want to go ahead and set previous location equal to center because we want to update this because remember, we're constantly comparing our old location to the new location, old location to the new location. So again, once we get past our uh, basically distance guard, uh, we go ahead and call reverse geolocation. Now we do our typical you know, error checking stuff to make sure we have everything. Uh, now we can start setting up our, uh, our address here. So let's go ahead and let street number, and we're going to talk about this here in a little bit, uh, equal placemark dot sub thoroughfare and 
let's go ahead and look into placemark real quick because I'm gonna create a very simple address that is just the uh, address number and then street. And I know this is different, like where you're at in the world. So you can kind of format this how, how you like. Um, but basically, you know, in the US, it's like one, two, three main street, you know, for, for the address. So uh, let's go ahead and go into CL uh, placemark here. And you can see all the uh, stuff here. So you have country, postal code, locality, which is the city, thoroughfare, which is the uh, you know street name, sub thoroughfare, which is like the street numbers, region, time zone. You can, uh, I'm pointing this out to see that you can you can create your own address. Mine's going to be simple, but if you want, if you know for your app you want to show you know state and city or country, you can go here and find the properties that you need and create your own address. So uh, back here, I'm just going to do again do the number in the street. So let street name uh, equal place mark dot thoroughfare. And then now it's just setting up uh, my label. So I, I do want to go back to the main thread because you see we're in we're in this closure here. So we're doing this asynchronously. Uh, so anytime you're updating your UI, you want to jump back to the main thread. So dispatch uh, queue dot main dot async. And then we're going to do self dot. And again, this is where the self dot address label dot text uh, equals. And then we're going to just do some uh, string interpolation here. And then we get the warning here, string interpolation produces a debug description. I'm sure you guys have seen this. If you don't unwrap your optionals, you'll, when you print out a label, it's gonna be like optional in parentheses and then the words and just looks bad. Uh, so we actually want to use no coalescing, again, another way to unwrap an optional, uh, to just use a blank, right? Because you know sometimes street names and, and things can get weird. I just wanna show a blank. Like if there's no number, just show the street name. Um, again, your case may be different where you might wanna show something else, like a default value. Uh, go ahead and do do that as well, handle what you need to handle. So let's go ahead and build this. Oh, and I accidentally got a crash. Uh, previous location is nil. So after some quick debugging, I, I made a tweak mid recording, which you should probably never do uh, that messed things up. So anyway, basically what was happening is this previous location was coming up nil uh, when did region when region did change got called, which happens like right away as the map is zooming in. So basically because this gets called constantly, I just need to do a quick guard statement uh, to make sure that that does have a value. So guard, i uh, let previous location uh, equal self dot previous location uh, else or return. So basically, again, we're just making sure this does have a value from previous location. And then, you know, I had to add self to this previous location down here. So now if we run it, uh, we should be good to go. And I thought about editing it out or, or like re-recording that entire section, but I want to leave it in because, you know, we all make these silly, stupid mistakes, uh, oversights. Speaking of oversights, I have two uh, number addresses down there. Uh, and that is because here on line 119 and 120, I'm doing sub thoroughfare and sub thoroughfare. Copy paste error, or not even a copy paste error, just a quick auto complete error. So this is just a uh, thoroughfare and they're very similar words. So again, I'm leaving this in on purpose. I've been bashed before. It's like, oh, you made mistakes in your tutorial. You shouldn't even be teaching. Like chill. <laughs> like I'm leaving this in to show you some of the silly mistakes that programmers of all experiences make, right? So I left two sub thoroughfares in there instead of thoroughfare. Um, so yeah, so let's go ahead and run this again. Now we should be good to go. Uh, so here we have our pin at the center of the map and we are at Apple headquarters in Cupertino. That is one infinite loop. If we move the map up to the simulator struggles, I might do some testing like on my device, but yep, yeah, 557 Grisham Avenue. So yeah, let's actually do that. I'm gonna run this on my device, pop up the screen and really play with it for you. Uh, so here we are, San Francisco. Uh, you see we're pretty zoomed out, but we're still getting, you know, the streets, but it's hard to see where the pin is at. But uh, even as you zoom in, uh, you can see the streets update here. Uh, let's go to let's go to Twitter headquarters here. So here are Civic Center, 9th, zoom in more. See, there's Twitter, if you can see it. And that is at 1355 Mark Street. I used to work in that building. That's why I, I know that address. So that address is right and work. So you can build this on your phone and play around for yourself. But again, this is how you scroll the screen around and get the address of where uh, a certain latitude and longitude is, which again, in our case, is the center of the screen. That's why we have the pin there. So there you have it. Now you can reverse geolocate an address. And again, stay tuned for part three, where we're going to get directions from the user's current location to that address and display those directions to the user. If you like what I'm doing here on my channel, consider subscribing. I put out new videos all the time.